Okay. Greetings, students. Uh, so today, I think even without wasting much time, we'll directly go to the next chapter that is trespass. So today in the Law of Torts, we are going to learn about trespass. I'm sure you have heard this word before, and even if you haven't, I'm sure you understand the, the concept after I just explained to you what is the meaning of it. I'm sure, quite sure that you have at least heard of some case that has occurred somewhere. I'm repeating the word trespass. Now, what is trespass? Trespass is nothing but infringing or violation of a right of a person to possession. Possession means where you are in hold of something. It could be property or some goods. Or in law, trespass could also amount to infringing or violating the rights of a person. So therefore, trespass can be trespass of a person, that is physical trespass, or trespass of chattels, that means goods, or trespass of property. Now, speaking of trespass of property, I'm sure you know that while you're enjoying peaceful possession of your house, example, somebody cannot just directly enter your house without your permission. Am I right or wrong? Would you allow some, some stranger to enter your house? And imagine you are, you are in one of the rooms and somebody, you find a stranger just walking inside your room and going and even the person is thirsty, for example, they just enter into your house, go to your kitchen and drink water. And this happens maybe continually or even once. So how, what would be your reaction? Naturally, you would be like, you know, aghast and say, what's this, what's happening? And who is this person? Now, when the person enters your property, your house without your permission, not having legal permission to enter your house or, you know, the, the, the entry is an unauthorized entry, that would amount to trespass. Now, let me reiterate, trespass could be in law, trespass of a person, trespass of chattels, and trespass of property, land, house, etc. Now, to bring a case of trespass, it need not be proved that the person has a malicious intention or has got a bad intention, in simple words. What is required to bring a claim of trespass is just that this fact of entry that the person, in case of trespass of land or trespass of property, this person has directly entered your house or your client's house or a person's house. Now, the question may come in your mind. What if the person is not the owner of the property? Even if the property is on rent, lease, or whatever, if or even, let me give you a situation that's better. So say that A owns um, a building X, and A rents out, he gives it on rent, or leases it, rents out the building X, to Mr. D and family. Now, the papers that are generated here is a rent agreement between A and B. Now, though A is the owner of the title, A transfers the right of possession. Remember, there are two factors here you will have to understand. One is ownership, one is possession. 
That is, you possess the property or you are, you know, you are living in a property. It can be by way of rent. It can be by way of gift. It could be by way of anything. I mean, but you are, uh, you know, um, uninterruptedly enjoying a particular property. Are you understanding? So when a person, I'm not talking about ownership here, when a person interrupts or infringes a person's or another person's right of peacefully enjoying his or her property, person or chattels, that means goods, is said to have committed a tort or a wrong of trespass or an offense of trespass. Now, why am I using the word offense? Now, I'm sure I explained to you earlier in the other classes that offense, the word offense can be used in case of criminal law. When it comes to civil law or a civil action, it is called as, um, you know, a wrong. And in the law of tort, it's called a tort. A tort or a wrong. So when a person decides to you know, file a civil suit against the trespasser who has wrongfully entered, who has trespassed your land, who has trespassed your property, who has wrongfully gained entry into your property. You might have an action of, you know, a civil, you can bring a civil action or a civil suit can be filed against the person. And depending upon the facts and circumstances of the situation and the case, one could even file a, a criminal case of trespass. Now, mind you here, even if the person who gains wrongful or unauthorized entry into a property or even, you know, goods, even if that happens, even if it he is having a wrongful belief that he is the owner of the property or even if he's got the rightful belief that he's the owner of the property, that is not a defense. The question here is, who is in possession of the property or who is enjoying the property uninterruptedly and who is now, you know, interrupting the peaceful possession of the property. And the difference between civil and criminal law is basically that when the peace and tranquility of a person is interrupted, despite warning a person to vacate the premises or not to commit the offense again, and the person keeps repeating and the person, you know, brings about you know, a lot of nuisance and takes away the peace of a person, the person may choose to bring a case of, you know, you know, a criminal case against a person, can file a complaint against a person. So, but it depends again upon the facts and circumstances of the case, what the person may choose to do. Normally, the first remedy that the person could have is bring an injunction suit or a stay order against the person saying that stop entering our property or stop doing whatever you're doing because I am in rightful possession of the property. So stop the person, stop the trespasser from committing trespass over and over again. One is, uh, one is injunction and next is of course, a person can claim actual compensatory damages for the injury that is caused as a result of trespass. It could be actual damages or it could be even nominal damages depending upon, again, nominal in the sense kind of fair damages here and there. Uh, even if the damages are, you know, cannot be uh, actually calculated, it could be even kind of, you know, psychological damage or where it has taken away the peace of a person. So maybe nominal damages, even though there is no actual destruction of property there. So if there is actual destruction of property, of course, actual damages would be awarded by the court. 
So a person can, of course, by way of remedy in case of a trespass, can file a civil suit and claim actual damages or nominal damages. And before that, if the person wants to stop that person from entering into the property, can bring a, 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 a suit of injunction. Now, injunction, just for your knowledge, is not always an entire suit. It is actually an interlocutory order. Interlocutory order means it is by way of interim application. It can be just a, an application in between the case of trespass where a person, you know, first files an application for, uh, you know, a case of trespass. And then once it is admitted, then immediately they bring a case of injunction or sometimes directly they, uh, they file an application for injunction and the court passes an order of injunction prima facie to stop the person. That prima facie means on the face of it, primarily on the face of it, as the court can see it, trespass can be proved later, but to stop the person, you know, proving of trespass can be later, but to stop the person from entering the property or, you know, uh, disrupting uh, peaceful enjoyment, peaceful possession and enjoyment of a property by someone else. Now, trespass can be also by, you know, uh, like, uh, Remember, I gave you uh, an example um, earlier. Remember, I said, suppose you're, you know, you are, you're having a house and you have a neighbor who is building, um, you know, who's constructing the next floor of his or her house on the top floor. And then, uh, you know, um, the person just tries to build a kind of a roof that is almost coming into the com your compound and touching the air and coming to the so I said that even though it passes through the air, you, the, you have got the right there, even if it is just suspended over your compound, uh, actually air rights are still under, uh, you know, uh, uh, not, I wouldn't say dispute, but still a lot of, um, you know, uh, you know, really concretizing it into this law of thoughts. There's still a lot of debate going on. However, prima facie on the face of it, when someone disrupts, or enters your property even through the air uh, in the in the sense like see this is your house okay this is your house and um, you know in the course of construction your neighbor uh, you know and this is your they say this is the compound wall okay now just got two hands this is your compound wall just imagine your compound wall and your neighbor is constructing a house here so he almost crosses your compound wall from the top floor so there is nothing here is you just imagine there is uh you know kind of um you know say a kind of a beam that is almost coming near your compound wall and almost entering a little bit this portion so you've got the right to bring an injunction first you have to explain to him saying that you're already entering into our property uh he'll say no i have not touched the ground you can say no it's all already come till here so you got the right it's almost entering your property so then even if it does not or she does not stop the construction or takes away this beam or you know demolishes this beam depending upon how far it is constructed so then you can bring a suit for injunction saying stop your construction right there do not move further and then uh, trespass would be proved and then the court would come up with an order for them to demolish or take away the beam that is entering a property. So even if it is suspended in the air, you've got the right to file a case of trespass. Trespass also can be of, against a person where uh, you know they, you physically touch a person or harm a person. Example, it could be a case of assault um, or it could be a case of battery. Battery in tort, I'm repeating, battery, B-A-T-T-E-R-Y, battery. I know it's the same spelling of the other battery or the cells. But this battery in law means um, not literally an assault, but a kind of assault. For example, even if you touch a person in anger, just, you know, in anger, you just push a person, A, you just push a person. So a person can file a case of, a suit, can bring a suit of battery in the law of tort, saying that the person pushed me in anger, you know, and a person can claim compensation. And in case, uh, you know, um, a person even once can file a case of assault in criminal law. Now, in criminal law, with respect to assault, it is not necessary the person directly touches a person. Now, the question is, in criminal law, 
if it has brought a reasonable apprehension into the mind of a person or reasonable fear or intimidation, it has caused reasonable fear or intimidation in the mind of a person, you, one can file a complaint in criminal law for assault. For example, somebody points out a knife at another person, say A points out knife at B and says that I'm really going to kill you now. I'm going to kill you. And you know, that creates intimidation, that creates a kind of a fear in the mind of B. So that would also amount to assault. So the main thing here is intimidation or you know putting a person um, in a position of fear in a way that uh, you know, it really harms the, the, the peace, the sanctity of a person, the mind of a person, um, and, you know, puts him in a position or her in a position uh, where he apprehends danger. So that is, that also uh, can, you know, amount to an assault and a person can file a case, a criminal complaint of assault. Now let us go through our slides. So this is just the uh, introductory part of it. It is quite a simple chapter and it is you know, quite a useful one. Just for you to understand and also probably help others. So trespass. Okay. What is trespass? Now, Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines trespass as an unlawful act committed on the person, property, or rights of another person, especially a wrongful entry on real property. Now, trespass can be civil and criminal. Now, now civil trespass, in civil trespass, the aggrieved party is entitled to receive compensation or damages for the harm inflicted as a result of trespass. And a person can even be sued under criminal laws for unlawfully gaining property into one's property or continuing to you know, disrupt the peaceful uh, possession of a property and to be there despite several warnings. Now, criminal trespass may be considered serious and may amount to infraction. I, I last class, I taught you what is an infraction, misdemeanor, or even a felony. So criminal trespass may con be considered as a serious offense and may amount to infraction, misdemeanor, or felony, depending upon, again, the facts and circumstances of each case. Criminal trespass may be trespass against body when the accused indulges into direct and forcible body interferences without the consent of a person in question. And as a result, there is a legal injury inflicted in the form of violation of legal right of the person or violating the privacy of a person. Example, false or uh, false imprisonment or even assault. Now, let us explain this with an example. For example, if X points out a gun at Y, he just points out a gun at why it is said to be an assault. Why? Because it has instilled fear or apprehension of probable harm in the mind of why. It has put him in the position of fear. Now, whether or not the gun is loaded with bullets, it would be construed as an assault. So it's not the mad question of whether there was, uh, you know, bullets in the gun. The gun was loaded or not. The fact that the person was in a state of fear was put was intimidated is enough to prove a case of assault. Therefore, the test for the wrong of assault in tort or civil law or the offense of assault in criminal law is that there should be an apprehension in the mind of the person concerned that there is going to be harm inflicted upon him in mind and that should have been caused. Now, in criminal case of trespass, the prosecution needs to prove the charge beyond all reasonable doubt. Last class, we learned also what it means to prove beyond all reasonable doubts. That is, to the largest extent, the case has to be proved that the person has committed the offense of trespass. Whether or not he has a malicious intention is a different issue, but he has committed the offense of trespass. And in criminal law, mens rea also is taken into consideration that is criminal intent. Apart from that is taking away the peace and tranquility of a, of a person or a neighborhood and, you know, 
continuing the offense is also is taken into consideration despite forming. However, now in civil case, if the plaintiff in a civil case that is an aggrieved party or a complainant in the criminal case, in your example that I gave you earlier, why knows that? Why knows that uh, the gun is not loaded? Now imagine a situation that uh, you know. Now X just takes an empty gun and points out at Y, and Y uh, he's aware that the gun is not loaded. Now listen to me carefully. X points out a gun at Y, and Y is fully aware that the gun is not loaded at all. Example or yet another example. X points out a knife at B. Uh, or Y, X points out a knife at Y. Now Y is aware that it's a toy knife. It's not a real knife, it's a blunt knife, it's a toy knife and it's not going to create any harm. It just looks like a real knife. Okay, so when Y has got the knowledge, he's got, he knows it that this knife is a toy knife and it's not going to create any harm. He cannot file a case of assault. Why? Because he already knows it. It has not reasonably caused any fear. And if at all he's trying to file a case of assault, the case would be thrown out because of the factor of knowledge that he's aware that the knife is a toy knife or the gun example in this example uh, means is not loaded here. So the probability of infliction of harm and intimidation factor has to be proved. Now, again, battery. Battery is in the law of tort. Uh, that is trespass against a person. If a person intentionally applies physical force on another person, even if you push a person, even with a finger, just do like this, that would amount to battery without any lawful justification, then the tort or the wrong of battery is said to have been committed. Now, there are two elements that are required to be proved in a case to constitute the tort of battery. One is the use of force and two is without lawful justification. I'm repeating one is to use force and second is without being lawfully justified or it is not a legitimate action and it is not lawfully justified. So intention is also a significant consideration in determining sometimes the tortious liability of battery. Like why we are saying intention here, for example, while you're running down the stairs, by mistake, you push a person. So you have no intention, you're in a hurry to go somewhere. By mistake, you dash a person. So that's not battery. Are you understanding? So that's why they say that in a tort of battery, uh, you know, intention is not uh, intention is taken into consideration because inadvertently or by mistake, you might just push a person by mistake while you're just running across the street. You might just touch a stranger. So the 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 tort of battery or a case of battery cannot be, uh, you know, filed against a person or you know raised against a person. So injury inflicted with a malified intention constitutes the tort of battery that is intentional, uh, you know, uh, intentional uh, use of force upon a person is called as battery. Now this is trespass against person. Battery is an example of trespass against person or assault in criminal law is an example of trespass against person. So unintentional infliction of physical force. Example, pushing someone while running down the stairs is not battery. Pushing someone in anger with intention to threaten a person or leading to intimidation is battery. Now in civil case of trespass, a plaintiff must establish liability by preponderance of the evidence that is to the largest extent possible, the majority of evidence uh, of a wrong or the tort of trespass against the trespasser or tortfeasor that the tortfeasor or the trespasser has committed the offense to the largest extent. That is a preponderance of evidence. The largest evidence has to be raised. Now, liability in a civil case of trespass on property or land can raise even if the trespasser did not damage the property or cause injuries, although damages will be nominal in these cases, as I said earlier. Now, in addition to damages, an order of injunction, an order of injunction 
also brought against the trespasser to prevent the trespasser from continuing to, you know, uh, enter the property or disrupt the peaceful enjoyment of a property. Now, in case of trespass of land or property, there are two basic elements to be considered. One, of course, is there is a person who has gained wrongful entry into the property. That means there is an entry element here where uh, there is interference with the right of possession of another without permission, or there is violation of right of uh, a person's right to possess the property. So there is interruption there. There is interference with the right of possession of another without permission, or that you could also call as infringement with the right uh, infringement of the right of possession of another person without permission. So entry element is should be considered here, interference with the right of possession of another without permission. And two is negligence and intent. <clears throat> negligence and intent. Now in law, negligent entry as well as intentional entry can be prosecuted or sued. In order to constitute a trespass, entry is a prerequisite, that means Gaining unlawful entry or gaining unauthorized entry is trespass. So therefore, the element of entry is very important to prove a case of trespass of land or property. That is the act itself is important. Now, who can be protected? Now, as I said earlier, it's not necessary that you have to be the owner of the property. Even if a person is staying on rent or has leased all the property, or even if the property is gifted to a person, the owner also cannot come and uh, you know disrupt the peaceful enjoyment of property by a person. So anyone who has got the right, legitimate right, exclusive possession of a property has a right to be protected against trespass. Legitimate in the sense, what I'm trying to say here is, is having legitimate possession over the property, has been enjoying the property. But there are instances where there are cases, whether or not a person is, you know, legally in possession of the property also can file a case of trespass. Now, whether the possession is legal or not is another factor. And, you know, there is, uh, you know, another case uh, to be solved and, there can be another case about it. That's a different issue. Trespass is basically infringing the right of a person who is in possession of that particular property or a house. Just you infringe the person's right or you disrupt the peace and tranquility of the person. The fact of entry or the fact of trespass, just you enter the property or you disrupt the peaceful possession of a property, that is enough for a case of trespass. Now, such a person who has an actual and exclusive possession of land or property can bring an action for trespass against a tort visa. Now, the person need not be the owner, title owner, to file a case of trespass. The right to exclude others would suffice. An example, again, another example is throwing stones at mangoes in some one else's orchard is a trespass. Now, all of us have childhood days. So, uh, like, if you have gone out any time to knock mangoes or any other, you know, those kind of fruits in some other person's property, knowing unknowingly as a child, so that you, you know, it is trespass. So, throwing stones at mangoes in someone else's orchard is a trespass. Next is again drawing water from a well. Sometimes it happens if a person, uh, if the owner. Uh, you know, allows a person to draw water, it happens in some places. If a person allows, uh, you know, where there are wells, in some places there are wells. So drawing water from a well, which does not belong to a person, drawing water is a trespass. Now here, if the owner permits it is okay, if the owner keeps saying, no, don't come here and draw water from my well or whatever. So then, you know, if the person continues to do that, that would amount to trespass. Now, again, here there is something to consider that if the owner has been allowing a person, okay, let me give you an example. Say um, there is a huge property and the person is a landlord and um, uh, say the name of the landlord is ABC. Okay, so ABC has got children, say, uh, not children, say a, a child called as PQR. He's got a son, pick your. So ABC and family is the owner of a huge property. And, uh, you know, they're, 
they are living in a neighborhood where uh, you know lacks proper water supply and abc in his land has got you know wells in his lands or just say even one well has got a huge well in the land which has sweet water drinking water so the you know the the neighbors around uh, abc uh, you know request abc then can we come and draw water from your well because we lack water abc says well it's just water no problem please come so uh, this goes on for years, say 20 years, 25 years, okay? So 20 plus years. And later on, this PQR grows up and ABC is like no more. Let's take that kind of a situation. And uh, PQR grows up and PQR now is irritated with the neighbors. You know, now probably it is the next generation who's coming and you know, uh, drawing, water from, uh, drawing water from the well and um, you know, he, he is irritated with that situation. So now he says, now how do I put a stop to this? I'm not interested in these people coming and drawing water. See, he has heard of the concept of trespass. He is a boy who is uh, educated and he has heard of this concept of trespass. And he says, no, I think I'm going to bring a case of trespass. Now, the question is, or even I want you to think about it. Do you think he's going to, uh, you know, uh, really win this case for trespass? Let me give an answer. I'll give you the answer. The answer to this is no. It's in the negative. Why? Because there is something else in law here, which I've not mentioned, just for your knowledge. There is something called as easementary rights. I'm repeating. There's something called as easementary rights. E A S E. M E N T A R Y. There's something called as easementary rights. What is this easementary right? If a person, or you know, is, uh, you know, using something for years together, and the owner of that particular thing has allowed it and has not raised objection. And this has happened for several years. That would give easementry right to the person who is using. For example, in our example, there are neighbors who are using the well for several years, now 25 plus years or 20 plus years. So it depends on jurisdiction to jurisdiction, how many years are passed. In certain jurisdictions, it is 25 years. If more than 25, some jurisdiction, depending upon, uh, you know, see, India is a huge, for example, in India, it's a huge country. So it, it, it has, you know, different states. So there are, uh, you know, different um, state laws as well. So in a particular state, it is, they say, no, more than 10 years, a person would gain an easementry right. If it is more than uh, 20 years, 25 years, some, uh, uh, I mean, the general law says, 25 years, yes, a person would gain easementry rights. So if a person has been using for several years, the person gains easementry rights. They say, no, your ancestors, your father, your grandfather has allowed us and us and our children, and they're using it for several years. So they can come up with a defense of easementry right to the case of trespass and the case of trespass would be dismissed. Are you understanding? So therefore, yeah, right. they say, even when you allow someone to uh, do something, you know, even when uh, you allow a person, say, example, to enjoy a part of your property out of your heart for a good cause, again, there one has to be very careful. And, you know, because there are several cases dumped in the courts with respect to trespass and where people come up with a defense of easementry rights when say certain number of years, if it's more than a decade or two decades or three decades or four, say 40 years also, if so many years have passed and people are used to using a particular well, so the court cannot come up with, cannot honor the, uh, you know, the application of, or uh, sorry, that cannot honor the, the, the petition of trespass injunction order may be brought but again uh, injunction order can be withdrawn are you understanding me so easementry right could be a, a defense for the defendant 
Now, easemented right comes only where a person has used or 